I'm Gary, and this is Coasting with Culture, which is all about combining theme park visits and riding roller coasters with various cultural experiences around the world. Previously, the Buzz Bar's crew spent a day in Denmark between Dijor Summerland and Farup Summerland, riding several great coasters and somehow avoiding disaster on multiple occasions. Next, we continue on to Sweden as we hop aboard a ferry, then visit three parks across the country, one of which offered yet another milestone ride. There's a Larson. We spent the night in the port town of Frederikshaven so that we catch a ferry into the city of Gothenburg. But it wasn't a very long night since we had an early departure to be able to make it to the first park by opening time. Larson. <laughs> I really hate you right now. As we waited to board, there happened to be a rather famous ship docked here. This British polar research vessel, named the RSS Sir David Attenborough, after the well-known naturalist, was in a naming contest where the voters overwhelmingly supported the name Bodie McBoatface from a joke by a radio DJ. The Natural Environmental Research Council declined to use that name for the main vessel, but did honor the choice of the voters by naming the lead autonomous underwater vehicle on board as Bodie McBoatface. The early departure did give a scenic morning glow as we departed from Denmark. After enjoying the sights from the top deck a bit, most everybody went to find a spot to crash to make up for a bit of the lack of sleep from the night before. After snoozing for a bit, we found ourselves along the banks of Yota Elv, taking in the sights of the city and passing underneath the Alvesburg Bridge, which was given its name from the ruins of a nearby medieval castle. After landing and deboarding the ferry, we drove over to our first park in Sweden, which was a favorite of mine from my last visit to Scandinavia, Liseberg. Unfortunately, the day was a bit of a mixed bag because the park was extremely busy due to a massive youth soccer tournament with thousands of participants nearby. And we were already aware of Baldur not being available because of its extensive refurbishment, similar to the one Colossus had gone through a few years earlier. So those were already hindering our day. But we decided to kick it off the right way by heading right over to the area with the two shameless coaster credits, both of which I already had, but joined the others in solidarity. We also enjoyed a lap on Lisebergbahn, the classic Schwarzkopf coaster that hugs the hillside while interacting with several other rides in the park, making for a fun time. That was followed by the new coaster that was added since my last visit, their B&M dive coaster, Valkyria, which was the smaller version like Krake at Heide Park, but this one had a bit more meat on it as it offered a few additional elements. Still not quite as good as Emperor in San Diego, but I did enjoy it more than the one from a couple days prior. One ride I was really anticipating here had been my number one coaster since 2014, and that was the mock launching coaster Helix. The first several times I rode it that past visit, there weren't many coasters like it, and it offered some forces unlike anything I'd experienced before, which is part of why I fell absolutely head over heels for it, and I was looking forward to rekindling that love of the ride. But unfortunately, time had not served my memory well. I feel like I might have added to the disappointment others had from it because I rated it so highly. While it's still a solid ride compared to the vast majority of coasters in the world, it didn't quite hold up to that number one spot I had it at, 
I think this is a case where some of the rides that have been built since this one just happen to go a few notches more extreme. I will say that if I were to work out a top 50 list, I believe it could still make that one. But after the lap I had, there's definitely going to be a different coaster in the number one spot. Throughout the day, we also enjoyed a few other rides, like their Scream and Swing from SNS and the always fun Sky Roller from Gerstlauer. One ride that I thought would be fun to try was a dark ride they added after my previous visit, Underlandet, where you follow the mascots of the park to an underground place with their gadgets and inventions. Although it seemed that their work might have caused a minor hiccup. So, uh, guys, what's going on here? We broke it. We broke it. Yep. We, we saw Peeping Tom, and <laughs> now we're getting evac. So, yeah, the world is, is ending. We it's just wait. Good. Hope we don't miss our Rapids reservation. That's the, that's the key <laughs> point here. We don't want to miss our Rapids reservation. Luckily, we did make that reservation for our Rapids experience, although compared to what we'd been through the past couple of days, it was rather tame. By this point, we decided to take a break from the park, go get checked into the hotel, then return to the city for dinner and a bit more park time, with our meal being at a really good burger restaurant called Holy Cow. Along with some solid food, they also offered hard milkshakes, which a few of us enjoyed. Sloan decided to have himself a large beer, which Mike ended up joining in on as well. Our evening to the park ended up being quite short though, as we took another lap on Lisiburg Bond, but found the lines to still be quite long because of that tournament and from a concert in the park. So we ended up heading out and trying to get a better night's sleep. The following day, we continued toward the other side of Sweden, making a stop along the way for Kolmarden Zoo, which is an incredibly massive venue that really takes advantage of its hillside location along Braviken, a bay of the Baltic Sea. This was the final park of the trip that was a new stop for me, as everything after had been a part of that tour with TPR. While there are a number of animals in the zoo, we came for the coasters, kicking off with Goddess Taget, which is a Zier Force 190, featuring the same layout as several of the Grover coasters at various SeaWorld parks back in the States. Getting to the other coasters meant walking all the way to the other side of the park, but it would be worth it for the coaster that came into view as you approached. Actually, that one would wait until the other coaster was ridden, which was Delphin Expressin, a Vacoma Junior coaster. Some may wonder why a few of us skipped the larger coaster for this one first. Well, I had a good reason for holding out. That's because Wildfire, the custom ground up topper track coaster from Rocky Mountain Construction, would be my 1200th different coaster ridden. So, we're doing it. I hate my shins right now because I've got a shin splint on my right shin. Baby. But you know what they say, no pain, no gain. That's right. And we now, about to gain. And now mm -hmm. it's time to go and knock out one more European RMC. Which will also be 1,200. It looks like there's been enough creds. It's time for the main event. <laughs> yes. And boy, it was a great one for the milestone. There were some beautiful sights to enjoy from the top going into the first drop. And the inverted stall may be among the best that RMC has made. Plus the interaction with the rocky terrain was a great touch on this ride. It might not be as fast as some of the other RMC creations, but it's excellent at what it does, making it among the best to come from those crazy geniuses in Idaho. Unfortunately, riding for the time would be short-lived as a large thunderstorm came through, closing all outdoor rides. It did let up for a bit, leading to us trying for a ride on one of their other main attractions, but we'd be delayed by another band of rain that came through. How are we feeling about the rain? At least I got on wildfire. Hi, Mark. I don't feel good about the rain. It makes me gloomy. Sad. Why is it at the wane? I want to be on wildfire, not in the wane. Actually, I want to be on wildfire in the wane. After waiting it out, we'd get a break in the weather, which allowed us a chance to enjoy the safari gondola.
This is a really neat use of this style of gondola, as they give you a bird's eye view of the various animals that reside in their zoo, complete with onboard narration to tell you more about them. And it's a long ride, with the path crossing over itself multiple times. Although if you got stuck with those who made some improv karaoke, it might seem a little too long. With the end of our safari, we had a bit of a photography and filming session with Wildfire before taking a few more laps. Sadly though, the weather would wreak havoc once again, and this time it seemed like it was here to stay, as the downpour was absolutely massive. We didn't have too many dry bodies from the group in that one, and given the bit of flooding of the pathways and parking lot, it certainly didn't help. So we went ahead and loaded back up in the van, and continued our drive over to Stockholm, where we took some time to dry out, then went out for an evening stroll to grab some food and drinks. I had a bit of a late start on our final day in Sweden, as I wanted to get some laundry done at a place I found down the street. But once I did, I went for a scooter ride to catch up with the guys at our last park in Sweden, Gronelund. Since I wasn't entirely sure what they had ridden, I grabbed a ride on the one coaster I needed in the park, which was their fairly new B&M inverted coaster, Monster. It has a really neat layout, where the loading platform is below street level and themed after a subway station. And while it's not super forceful compared to its early counterparts, it makes for some great use of the tight space it fits in, with some solid foot chopper effects and interactions with other rides, buildings, and pathways. Once I finished that, I was able to catch up with the guys for a ride on what might have been a surprise favorite for the group in Jetline, the classic Schwarzkopf with some incredible moments of positive G's, especially the large diving turn that follows the first few drops. We follow that up with a lap on Kvasten, their Vacoma Junior suspended coaster that shares the same layout as Freedom Flyer at Fun Spot in Orlando, but may have some of the best interactions with other rides and buildings for this type. The shameless rides continued as we took a lap on the small Zier Tivoli coaster called Nicole Pigan, which may have led to one of the best slow motion video clips in Buzzed Bar's history. Then there was another shameless plus one aboard Tuf Tuf Target. We took a pause from coasters for a bit as we enjoyed their awesome fun house, which has all kinds of great obstacles and slides as you pass on through.
we kick the intensity back up a notch with a few drop tower rides, including the newer style tower from Intamin called Icaros. Using similar tilting seats as Falcon's Fury at Busch Gardens in Tampa, but with individual cars on either side of the tower. Needless to say, someone in the group was not as excited for this one. We took it easy on the next ride, as we enjoyed their unique ghost train ride, which was certainly among the more fun dark rides of the trip, even with its more corny spooky style. While this might not have elicited true fear, the next ride did, with their older style Intamin drop tower. Love you. I'm the one who recommended this. What's wrong with me? Right? Just wait till your weight is pressing on it. Oh my god. Oh, oh that hurts. Oh, man. Oh, man. Another ride I was happy to get on again was their unique Gravity Group wooden coaster, Twister, that has one of the best settings on the waterfront and a really fascinating layout that feels like it was partially inspired by Wild Mouse coasters with tighter turns as it crisscrossed in and out of itself and carrying a lot of speed when it hits the final brakes. We did get a few rerides in, but unfortunately the park was operating in a split schedule where the first riding session ended at 3.30, and thus we'd have to pay for a second admission if we wanted to stick around for more. While this may have made sense during the pandemic, which called for a lighter capacity, it was a bummer to have to cut the day off like that. But it didn't necessarily end up being the worst thing to happen, as we did a little bit of exploring heading back to the hotel and finding a place for a late lunch, where I might have had a bigger beer than I needed. After enjoying some time chilling out, Sloan, Mike, and I went for a scooter riding adventure into the heart of Stockholm, making a visit to see the Swedish Royal Palace Kungliga Slottet, as well as the nearby Swedish Parliament building Riksdag Suset. As we rode on, we found an excellent photo spot across the water from the Days Park before we went back to the hotel to freshen up and enjoy one last evening in Stockholm as six of us would head to the final country of this European coaster run in the morning. Thank you for watching this Coaster with Culture video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button below to see future videos here on YouTube like these ones which you may enjoy as well. Additional content can be found at coastingwithculture.com and you can also follow Coasting With Culture on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for announcements, previews, and updates. Thanks again for watching and until next time, take care and safe travels.